Pat here from Dead Things. I always start my vlogs with Pat here from Dead Things. Probably going to continue to do it too. So we've got our air compressor, but now we know how we're going to get air to the prop, but we can't connect that air compressor directly to the air cylinder. It's just going to put it open and it's never going to shut. So you have to have a way to turn it on and off. And that's where solenoids come in. Solenoids are essentially air switches for the most part. Um, almost like a relay, I guess, in, in a lot of ways. But basically think of it as an air switch. So there's a number of different types. <clears throat> that is a three-way. There's a port there, a port there, and a port there. That is a three-way, which unfortunately behaves a heck of a lot more like a two-way, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And these are two four-way five ports. One here, one here, and they're joined by a common air. This is what I use in my pneumatic groundbreaker, this guy right here. Now, basically, three-way means that one of these, you have three ports, and basically one of these ports is always open. So let's say this one is always open. So if I blow in air here, it's going to exhaust out here which means that this side is always closed. So what you're going to do is you're going to have your air come in here in the closed side and your prop here. Okay? So that when you energize it, this pathway now becomes open, which extends your your ram or retracts it whatever way you have it set up, right? But it it it, it actuates your cylinder. And then when it's de-energized, the air has a chance to exhaust out. And that's the way this little bundle of joy was supposed to work, but it doesn't, because this has to be under pressure. I haven't actually tried putting a flow control on that end, and I may try to do a bit of experimenting with that. But basically, I had to lock this off. So this actually behaves like a two-way. Air comes in, and when it's energized, the air coming in opens this, and it flows through there. How does it exhaust? I have to have a flow control in line with this to allow air to exhaust out. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, this is a four-way five port. So basically, if you can see here on this one, you have one, two, three, four, five. Five ports. Okay, so just for argument's sake, we're going to say that this is normally open and this one is normally closed. Okay, so without air or without this being energized, air is going to be pushing into here. Okay, so let's say retracting the air cylinder. Right? When this is energized, this pathway closes, allows the air in the cylinder to exhaust out here, and then this pathway at the same time opens, pushing air in, which helps to exhaust this air. And then when it's de-energized, this switches back over here, which the air going in helps to exhaust the air in the cylinder out here. Okay, is that making sense? I hope it is. So basically think of it, air, this and this is its exhaust. This and this is its exhaust. Okay, if you do not have an exhaust, the air will, the cylinder will not move out of its, the position, that last position. So, let's say you've got it and you've got the cylinder extended. 
If there is no exhaust, it doesn't matter if you put air into it to retract it because the air has no place to exit from, it's just not going to, to, uh, to retract. It just won't. That is what I found with this. And so that's why I had to basically put a flow control, a uh, yeah, flow control on this line. And that's wasteful of air because basically it's it's the flow control is slow enough that it it still allows air to enter that cylinder and and retract. My leaping bride is where I use that one on. So it's still got enough air pressure there to to push that four bar up and extend extend that uh, that ram, but. Um, if I hold it up there, air is continuously leaking out of that flow control. And as soon as I that prop is de as soon as that solenoid is de-energized, all the air in that ram escapes. So it's already escaping as I'm controlling it. You want to minimize air escape as much as possible. That helps to preserve the air that's in your tank and uh, and so that your compressor isn't constantly having to cycle to rebuild up that air. Uh, a couple more things about this. This is 110 here. This is 12 volt. This is 12 volt. What does that mean? It means something like this. If, if I have, say, one of those little pickaxe um, uh, project boards with a Darlington driver on it, I can switch those using that pickaxe. I don't have to switch a relay in order to switch. I would have to use that Darlington driver to switch a relay in order to switch this. So I would have to have the 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 uh, project board, a relay, and then this. With the 12 volt, I can switch it directly off of the. Uh, off of the project board. And this is, uh, what is this, my Pickaboo F1104. That's what I got. I haven't got a 105, I got a 104. So I like this little unit. This is a good little unit. I, I've been really happy with that. But I'm more happy with my pickaxe. Um, okay, flow control. That's where things like this come in. With this, you can control how much pressure is going in to a particular prop. One of the props I'm working on right now, my witch prop, it's going to take a, probably more pressure to move that four bar than it is to move the horizontal axis. So if I had just the same amount of pressure, that horizontal axis may be very violent where I don't want it to be, I want it to be smooth. So using this, I can then control how much air is going into the cylinder and how, and thereby controlling how fast it moves. This is one way of doing it. There's, uh, there's another one which is, uh, well, I'll show you the difference right now. So you remember those other um, connectors, the M style connectors. Typically, going from the solenoid to the prop, you're going to use these guys, and they are called um, just hose fittings. But basically, you use hose like this, which is a plastic hose. This is a quarter inch, and basically, that just pushes into there and then to release it you just push back on this little blue thing and that will release <laughs> sure it will um, so uh, this is typically what you use from that point you could use it um, from say you could have a manifold on the end of there which has all of these and then run this you know say into here and run this all over your yard um, 
I choose not to do that. I think it's for me, for what I'm doing, and and you know others who are more knowledgeable may be able to uh, to explain it. But I think you get better um, uh, air pressure when you use a larger hose along there. I think it's 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 kind of the same concept in uh, um, in ele electrical. You know, if you're running long distances, you don't want a large light light gauge uh, wire. You want a heavier gauge wire, and I think it's I think it's the same concept in pneumatics. I could be wrong. I'm just making that intuitive leap. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention about these guys. You can see that this is where the power goes into here. I have seen these. And unfortunately, I can only source this locally with one of these over here as well. So it's dual. It's, it's a double. It's not a single. With this, right now, a spring is keeping that over into the closed position, right? And as soon as it's energized, that magnetic uh, coil pushes that spring back. And then when it's de-energized, it goes back. When you have a double then basically it's electrical that's that's doing it so electrical pushes it over there and electrical pushes it over here so you basically have to have energized de-energized and then energized de-energized um, I don't like that myself personally that's just uh, just my it just seems like it's going to complicate matters a little bit more so so that's solenoids right there. If you have any more questions, just leave it in the comment box and I will do my best to answer them.